sit straight or stand straight. If you can sit, sit straight. You don't have to see now. So your head, neck, and chest is in a straight line. Start by focusing in your heart area, in the middle of your chest. With your mouth closed, breathe in and out through your nose, but focus on your heart as if you were breathing in and out through your heart. Breathe deeply. Breathe in the energy of the universe, the Shakti of the universe. Breathe in the breath of God. Let it fill your whole body. And now each time you breathe out, breathe out all of the things in you which keep you from knowing your true self. Breathe out all of the separateness, all of the feelings of unworthiness, all of the self-pity, all of the attachment to your pain, whether it's physical or psychological. Breathe out anger and doubt and greed and lust, confusion. Breathe in God's breath and breathe out all of the impediments that keep you from God. Let the breath be the transformation. Now focus in the middle of your chest and imagine a tiny being the size of a thumb sitting on a lotus flower right in the middle of your chest. And as you look upon this being, Notice the light pouring forth from it. Notice the peace that surrounds it. It's equanimity. The radiance makes it bright with a light that comes from within. Now slowly let that tiny being grow in size until it has filled your body so its head just fills the space of your head, its torso, your torso, its arms, your arms, its legs, your legs. And now in the skin of your body sits this radiant being, a being of infinite wisdom, a being of the deepest compassion, a being who is bathed in bliss, self-effulgent bliss a being of perfect tranquility. Now let this being in your skin begin to grow in size. Experience yourself growing. 
until your head reaches the top of the ceiling and you are sitting beneath the floor and all of the beings gathered in this space are within your body. All of the sounds, even the sound of this voice is coming from inside you. Peaceful, calm. Now continue to grow as your head goes up into the sky, blueness all about, until all of Philadelphia is within you. Look inside and experience the human condition. See the loneliness, the joy, the caring, the violence, the paranoia, the love of a mother for child. the sickness, the fear of death. See it all. Realize it is all within you. Look upon it with compassion, with caring, at the same moment with equanimity, feeling the light pouring through your being, inward and outward. Now continue to grow in size until your head is among the planets. And you are sitting far, far deep into the universe and the earth lies within your belly. All of humankind lies within you. Feel the turmoil and the longing. Feel the beauty. Sit in this universe, experiencing your own silence, your own peace your own equanimity. Let all of the creation of human beings' minds be within you. Look upon them with compassion. Now continue to grow until not only this galaxy but every galaxy is within you until every thing of which you can conceive is within you. All of it inside you. Only one, one in the silence no other beings here. All of the planes of consciousness are within you. And you sit in your own tranquility. With the wisdom that understands it all. In the deepest peace. every cell radiating love. Now, if you wish, let the boundaries of your being become porous and slowly disintegrate 
until you merge into the Absolute. Only formlessness here. Now slowly reconstitute the boundaries of your vast being, the One. Come back from beyond the One. And then slowly come down in size, reduce in size. until your head is once again among the planets and the earth is within you, <clears throat> until your head is once again in the heavens and the cities are within you, until your head is at the top of this room and all of the beings gathered here are within you. Stop here for a moment. From this place, look within in the room and find where the being is sitting who you thought you were when you came here. Look at that being. Bring to bear all of your love and compassion. See the journey of that being through time and space. See its plight, its fears, its doubts, its connection. See how close it is to knowing who it is. Look within that being and see the purity of its soul. Look upon that being with love, compassion, equanimity. See it in its process of evolution. Now come down in size until you are back in that body with the being of radiance filling your skin. Back in this room. Feeling the love pouring out of you and the peace. As this being of perfection, use the light that is coming through you now to send blessings of peace and love to other beings in the universe. We as one organism at this moment create a lighthouse through our collective thought, we send peace and love to all those who suffer. Think of all the people who you have felt less than love for. Look to their souls and send them some of this peace and love. Let go of the anger or the judgment. and then out to people who are ill, who are lonely, who are afraid, who have lost the way. Just share your blessing. Because only when you give can you continue to receive. And you will find that no matter how much you give, you will receive tenfold. Because at this moment you can know yourself to be a being of radiance, of peace, of love, of compassion. Mm. 
Now let the radiant perfect being once again assume its diminutive form, the size of a thumb sitting upon a lotus flower in your heart, in your spiritual heart in the middle of your chest. This is the inner guru. This is the being within you who always knows. This is the being who you meet through your deeper and deeper intuition when you've gone way beyond your mind. This is the being who is the flow of the universe. At any time, you need only sit and be quiet and call out to this being, and it is there. And when you have finished the journey, you have disappeared into this being, surrendered, merged, and then you recognize that God Guru and Self are one. The space in which we now find ourselves has within it a balance, a very delicate balance between Shakti and love. In this journey, there are many times when the amount of energy in a scene gets very high, and you feel the power and force, but not the love. And there are some times when the love is present, but there's very little energy in the system. As you purify, as you throw into the fire of purification, all of the things that hold you from knowing yourself, you tune to more and more energy which pours through you because your cup becomes larger. And at each step, you must merge the Shakti with love bring the heart and the head together. In fact, this journey is very much a balancing, a balancing act all the way. For as you probe deeper within yourself and into the universe, you connect in your search for truth, closer and closer to the raw truths of the universe, <clears throat> the truths of the impersonality of it all, the truths that are only knowable in the coldness of the peaks of the Himalayas, the coldness and impersonality that is, for example, reflected in the words of the third Chinese patriarch when he says, the great way is not difficult for those who have no preferences. When love and hate are both absent, everything becomes clear and undisguised. But make the smallest distinction and heaven and earth are set infinitely apart. That is cold truth. And one gets enamored of the exquisiteness of that cold truth. And if you reside only in that place, 
soon you experience an indifference, an indifference to all of the suffering around you. But if you are seeking perfection, then that truth must be balanced. Balanced with what? Balanced with caring. Just as there is the clear, cold equanimity of Nibbana, there is the bleeding heart of Jesus. The caring means that you retain an identity with all of the suffering in the universe and you don't close your heart to it. And as you get clearer and lighter, that balancing becomes more exquisite. Until you sit perfectly equanimous in the truth and the blood of your heart pouring upon the snow out of your caring for the suffering of all sentient beings. At that point, every act that is performed is in perfect harmony with truth and is optimum for relieving the suffering of all sentient beings. At that point, there is no longer a choice. But just before you arrive at the perfected truth and that balance, you come to a choice point. For there is a horrible exquisiteness about the impersonality of God. For God, through infinite grace, frees you to the point where you have a choice. The choice to merge back into God or to push against that merger which is pulling you with the power of millions of suns and retain form in order to relieve the suffering of all sentient beings. And any being that walks this earth or any other plane of existence who is free and who has voluntarily made that choice is a statement of what true sacrifice is about. For Christ's great sacrifice was not the crucifixion. Christ's great sacrifice was in coming here at all. To leave the Father, and when you recognize that the Father and the Son are one, it means to go away from yourself. That is the sacrifice. And the interesting thing is that God doesn't care which choice you make. Nobody will push you. Some beings merge and some beings don't merge. But when you meet a being who is free, and who yet remains in form, be it physical or astral or causal, you honor that being because they are making that being and those like it are making the ultimate sacrifice. And that sacrifice is for you for nobody else but you. The guru sacrifices 
his or her being for you. And as you become purified, you join the game. You too will have the choice. And you will begin to understand the nature of the true sacrifice. Not because of righteousness, but because of caring but caring blended perfectly with truth. There is an incredible amount of energy in this gathering this evening, filling each of us. There are many, many beings present here tonight who are not in physical bodies, who have come to bless us, and that are pouring shakti and love into every one of us. What you do with the energy is a function of your level of understanding and readiness. The energy can be taken out into the world in order to perform acts that are your dharmic acts, that is, the form in which you must manifest, be it as lawyer, mother, doctor, student, sweeper, bus driver, in whatever form, but all done with an awareness that that energy comes from God and the very act is an offering back to God. For to become part of the cycle, the energy that pours in you is given to you in order to offer it back. It is a sacrifice to a sacrifice within your own creation. 